into the another chapter uh, in form four, which is the fourth chapter on chemical composition uh, in the cell. So in this chapter, uh, we're going to learn what is the chemical composition in our cell. So all these chemical composition examples are carbohydrate. We have proteins. We have the lipid, which is the fats. And we have the example of protein, which is an enzyme. And how we're going to see the different composition of these chemical are uh, important in our daily life. Since this uh, chapter is uh, quite long, I'm just going to cover the important, which is the protein and uh, some of the enzymes part. I'll thoroughly discuss on the carbohydrate and also the lipid as we go on this chapter. So first, we're just going to jump into the protein. So we're going to see the structure of protein. So in this diagram, we can see the structures. Okay, the structures are classified into the uh, four structure uh, level. The is called the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So how these structures are being classified and what's the differences? So we can see that each of these colored uh, material compound here is called the amino acids. So these colored things are all amino acids. So all the amino acids are uh, lined into a linear. That means they are in a single uh, sequence. Uh, all these sequence right now are called the polypeptide chain. So these are like forming a sequence of like a chain and each of these are amino acids. So it's, if it's in a linear sequence, it's called the primary structure. Uh, on the other hand, we can see the secondary structure. It's still in the uh, polypeptide chain, but in this case, it's not in the straight manner, but it's now being coiled. Okay, you can see it's like a coil, and it can be coiled into two forms, either in a alpha helix chain, or it uh, can be also folded into a beta pitted sheet. Okay, so that's why it's called the secondary structure. So in case of the tertiary structure, we have the alpha helix or the beta pleated. Now it can be folded, can be coiled, okay? And now it can form a 3D structure, three-dimensional shape, okay? And you can see the shape is like a zigzag coiled, folded. So we can see all the alpha and beta around here. So in tertiary structure, an example are all the enzymes that we can see. Hormones in our body, plasma proteins like albumin, and antibodies uh, we will more uh, learn in this uh, chapter from five transport. So all these are made of all the tertiary structure. So the final structure is the quaternary structure where this tertiary structure, one, two, three, four, can be combined together. You can see here, like this is one tertiary, another one tertiary, another one, another one. In case it can be two or more, like in this case like look like three or four. So when they combine together, they form a complex, and these are now called the quaternary structure. And a very common example is hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is the uh, red pigment, red color part of the red blood cells, which give you a red color for the blood cells. So we can appreciate they are primary. We can appreciate the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So there are a few factors that affect the enzyme uh, function. Okay, uh, temperature, first one. Okay, when the temperature going up, the rate of reaction is going to increase. So it's going to be more and more. Okay, and when you reach to a certain temperature, in case we call it as optimum temperature, where the temperature is at this maximum, and after that, it's going to basically drop down. Okay, there's not going to be any more reaction. In this case, we can see that example here is like 37 degrees Celsius. So in human body, 37 is a normal temperature, and most of the enzymes work the best at the optimum of 37. In the case of like fever, a high temperature, the enzyme is basically being said to be denatured. Okay, like denatured, in another word can say is is like broken down. So exam enzyme will not able to work to do all the uh, cell cell activities. So in case of uh, pH. So certain uh, enzymes have certain uh, pH, like pepsin, are working in more of acidic, so we can find in the uh, digestive system. For in case of the salivary, we can see it's about neutral, so salivary present in our mouth, and like trypsin are more of the alkaline. So different enzymes have different pH, and we need to give, uh, I mean, the body will give this suitable um, pH condition for the enzymes to work. Uh, another two more uh, factors are substrate. Substrate is basically the items or the component that sit on the enzyme. So we can see as the substrate concentration increase, 
okay, the re rate of reaction is not going to be much because uh, enzymes concentration are being limited. So as even though you increase the substrate concentration, the enzyme is still less. So there's no chance for the enzyme to actually sit on the active side of the enzyme for it to continue with the rate of reaction to be increased. Okay, and in the case of enzyme concentration, similarly, uh, even though uh, enzyme concentration kept on increase, the substrate concentration somehow being the limiting factor. So there's no point of increase, increasing enzyme when the substrate are no more there to actually come in contact with. So let's see what this enzyme activity is going to basically look like. And this is going to come out with a concept of lock and a key where we need to understand the enzyme's action. So in this case, we are talking about substrates since just now. So these are called substrate. In this case, this is a key. Enzyme is the lock. Okay. So substrate basically can sit at the active side, which I'm showing here, like an E here. Okay. This part is the active side of the enzyme. So when the substrate binds to the active uh, side of the enzyme, now it's said to be forming an enzyme, substrate, and this is a complex. Because this complex is unstable, so there'll be an enzyme action taking place and breaking down the uh, substrate into a product. So you can see a product which is now as like a substrate was a single. When it binds to the enzyme, it's being broken down into a product like this. Now as you can see basically two uh, components here. And this process, basically enzyme can be reused again. So this enzyme can bind again with the same uh, substrate and this process is going to be continuous. So enzyme can be used again and again. So we can see basically that enzyme is actually catalyzing the biological mechanism of activities and they can speed up. Without enzyme, it's going to be basically slow. So the next uh, important part is how this enzyme actually are being produced. How our cells that are being uh, uh, inside our body are producing it. So this gives rise to the uh, concept of synthesis of enzyme. So we can see this is a DNA uh, in the nucleus. So this nucleus, there's a DNA. Okay, so basically DNA will give some kind of code, okay, to the ribosome. Okay, we have the ribosome here. And ribosome will do some coding, will, will actually translate it into a, a code which is called the mRNA, messenger RNA. Okay, and this messenger will go out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Okay, uh, where it's gonna attach with the ribosome. Okay, will be transcribed, go out of this um, of the nucleus. We're gonna see that the ribosome, which we see in the rough endoplasmic. And this messenger is gonna basically uh, go through this ribosome at the same time being translated. Here will be transcript. This is translated into a protein. So you can see each of these are amino acids and they are forming a polypeptide chain. So when these are being formed, this uh, protein need to be released out of the cells. So this is where you can see all the process just now happening in the uh, nucleus and the ribosome uh, part. So let's continue the journey from the ribosome. Okay, so from that, we can see that they're gonna be a transport vesicle uh, branching out from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, and this transport vesicle will go into the Golgi apparatus where it's basically gonna modify it, gonna do a lot of processing. And from that, they're going to actually uh, pinch out into a secretory vesicle. You can see it's projection from the Golgi apparatus. And inside here is basically containing all the modified protein. And this protein is now already uh, uh, to be said like an enzyme. When it fuses, go near to the plasma membrane, it's going to fuse and then basically release out all the, uh, all the enzymes out. So this is how you can see nucleus and the ribosome produce the protein. Uh, at the uh, nucleases, ribosome attached to the rough endoplasmic, and they're going to be a transport vesicle carrying it to the Golgi apparatus, modification and processing. And from there, all the uh, secretory vesicle carrying it, fused to the membrane, and finally releasing it out and part of the cells. So that's about the production of enzyme. So let's recap uh, on the chemical composition. So chemical composition can be organic, inorganic or organic. So inorganic is obviously water. Water required to keep our cells and our uh, most of the time cells to be uh, in, in well hydrated manner. So organic compound we have seen largely on the proteins. So we have carbohydrate, 
carbohydrate is divided into three types of sugars, which is the monosaccharide, single sugar, simple sugar. Disaccharide is uh, more like a, a combination of monosaccharides. We have uh, fructose, uh, sucrose, and also galactose, uh, lactose, sorry, for that. And polysaccharides, example, are like starch and glycogen. Starch is in the plant storage, and the um, gly glycogen is in the animal storage. Next, we have the example of fats, uh, lipids, fats, oils are in a liquid uh, form, waxes are semi, and phospholipid that we see in the uh, phospholipid of the plasma membrane, and steroids are some of the examples of like hormones. So for proteins, we see and the enzyme, we saw the enzyme uh, concept, which is the lock and key, and we saw the enzyme characteristic will be reused again, again, and there are certain factors like pH, temperature, substrate, and the enzyme concentration. And the mechanism, we saw how it uh, substrate combined with the um, uh, enzyme and forming a complex and then producing a product. And finally, we have the nucleic acid, which is the DNA. And nucleic acid, we will further uh, learn in chapter inheritance of form 5. So I will not further elaborate here. So let's see the example of the questions here. So we have the structure of a protein here, P and Q and PQ to be said to be like this. So based on this diagram, we have to see what's the structure level look like. Since they are looking like a coil here, so obviously this is secondary structure, while Q is the primary because it's in a linear. So next is describe the structure of P. So P is basically being coiled, okay, forming in alpha helix. In this case, it's alpha helix. And Q said to be broken down to form a product. Explain how this happened. Okay, in this process, we breaking down the bond between this. So it's by hydrolysis where water need to be included in this. When water is including, the, the breakdown, the lysis will happen where the bond will be broken down. Okay, so into a product, you can see here. State why plant protein are second class protein. So we have plant proteins. Okay, and this plant protein are said to be second class because they do not contain any essential amino acids like animal protein. So in this case, animal protein are said to be first class. So animal protein will give you more of the protein uh, functions like growth and the muscle repair and of any damages. So that's why plant protein like soya is not so much of, you know, uh, in like case of vegetarian, but animal protein can provide more or better because there are uh, first class protein. So here we have an example of a person called Zaidi taking some food. Uh, he took some food and the, the food stain left over on this um, shirt. And the mother suggested that he use a biological washing powder. So biological washing powder, basically all the enzymes are inside. There's not a normal detergent that we have in our house. So this is the brand X, and brand X contain like protease, lipase, soap, perfume, and some other uh, chemicals. Uh, there are three types of the shirt, which have the egg stain, oil stain, and vegetable stain. So which stain can be removed by brand X? Okay, so we have to analyze this uh, content of the brand X. So we can see that there's protease, there's lipase. So the, as the name says, these are enzyme responsible for protein and enzyme responsible for lipase. So in this case, egg and oil will be removed from the shirt because egg is a protein and oil is a uh, fat. So protease will remove the egg, which egg stain, the protein, and lipase will remove the lipid. Uh, next is Zaidi noticed that enzyme uh, only uh, a little, you can see like 5%, comparable like this is 50, 15, 10, 10. So only small amount. Why? Because as I mentioned before, enzymes are only needed in very small amount because they are not used up but can be used again and again. So they can catalyze many substances as they want. Um, like Zaidi washes his clothes in hot water instead of warm water. You can see uh, it's been indicated here, please use uh, hot water, uh, warm water, but he used uh, hot water. So this uh, gives rise to the factor affecting the enzyme. So when this hot water, the stains will not be removed because high temperature will cause the denaturation, breaking down the enzyme. If a Zaidi shirt is made of silk, 
brand X is not suitable uh, or not? The question is. So silk is actually a byproduct of a animal protein. Okay, by the silk uh, produced by the animal. So since it's a protein and we have proteins in the compound and the content of the our brand Z, so protein will be broken down. So if you are making, if you're washing any shirt that's made out of silk, and obviously you can't put into any biological washing powder that contain protease. So this is a structure of the uh, animal cells again. Okay, another question. And we can see all the structures here. So we're gonna see how an enzyme made in this concept, in this question. So first, a normal question of how uh, organal X and Y look like. So X is basically, the Golgi apparatus and uh, why is like branching from there is all the lysosome. Okay, and function of X you can see is like a thread like structure and it's inside the nucleus. Okay, obviously, it's a chromosome, um, it will learn more in the inheritance form 5 chapter. So, this question is asking what happens if the if you want to produce an enzyme that's outside of the cell if uh organ X is not there. If Golgi apparatus is not there, okay, um, when there's no rough endoplasmic reticulum, so if there's no, no protein will be synthesis because we basically do not have ribosome that present on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So without Golgi apparatus, we can't modify, we can't process, no new protein can be actually packed and into the secretory vesicle. So no protein, no enzymes, no transport. Basically, you will not have enzyme released out. Explain how, why. So we already know that this is a lysozyme. So lysozyme will contain lysozyme, okay? So it's gonna basically digest the, all the damaged cells, all the damaged organelles. So it's gonna break down the cells. So with that, this is the part of like uh, chapter four.